God's word instructs us to be watchful in prayer. Learn what this means and how to practice this. We discuss three things to be watchful about and four areas to be watchful over in prayer. All right, we're going to make our declaration and uh, then uh, we will get into the word of God. I want to just remind us about the power of our words. And one of the important lessons and insights that we uh, have been emphasizing from scripture uh, is the fact that, you know, God has taught us to speak words of faith. Uh, Jesus taught us in Mark 11, 22, 23, he said, have faith in God. And then he said, speak to the mountain, tell it to move and it will move and nothing will be impossible to you. And he said, whatever you believe, you speak. And he said, nothing will be impossible to you. And Mark 11, 24 and 23 and also Matthew 17, 20. So, you know, we learn that we can release our faith by our words. And that's something God has put in place for us to exercise, for us to operate. So one of the things we do is to declare our faith, to acknowledge our faith, to affirm our faith by the words we speak. So when we stand up and make a de- declaration, we are saying this is, you know, in a very concise way. We are saying this is what the Bible says. This is what I believe. Uh, this is what I affirm in agreement with God and his word for myself and uh, for what he will do in and through me. And we are declaring our faith. And we're ext- expecting those words to really be established in our lives. So let's rise up to our feet, please. And uh, let's make our declaration. Uh, let's say it out loud, bold, and strong together. If you brought your Bibles, I encourage you to hold it high up in the air. And uh, say this out loud, bold, and strong with me. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I'm saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I'm blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of his blessing. To many people, I receive his word, I believe his word, and I live by his word. Christ is my master, and to him I am in absolute surrender. I present myself as a new wineskin to receive new wine and fresh oil being poured out on me. God releases a new work of his spirit in me and through me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated, please. Thank you. Um, We like to share testimonies that keep coming in. And uh, what we've started doing uh, maybe, uh, maybe two months ago or something like that, is uh, we, we shared these testimonies, of course, in an anonymous way. We, don't, we try not to reveal individual details on our Facebook page. So every time a testimony comes in, a summary of that is put on our Facebook page. Uh, so if you want to keep track, uh, if you want to be informed of all the testimonies, you know, uh, you could do that through our Facebook page. But I'm just going to read one testimony that came in uh, last week. Or this was, sorry, our number first by email. And... Uh, uh, it's a little lengthy, but I just want you to uh, listen to what this person shared. Um, uh, this person writes, I want to share a testimony of supernatural healing. I- I've been watching the Supernatural Sunday sermons for some time, and uh, I-, I still had many doubts regarding various portions of the Bible where I was confused. So I decided to watch the sermon series on ministering, healing, and deliverance. Needless to say, all my doubts were clarified and faith increased in my heart. I was especially blessed by the part where I got an understanding of the authority that we have over the powers of darkness. I felt so bold and confident on the inside. I had a condition in my body due to which I had been on medicines for the past 13 years. Every time prayer was made at the end of each part of the sermon series, um, Pastor asked to check if uh, one had been healed. So after I watched the entire series, which took some weeks, I decided to check if I had been healed. Now, I asked the doctor if I could skip the medicines for some time. They were reluctant initially, but they allowed. 
Three weeks passed by, and to my total surprise, I realized I did, didn't have to depend on medicines. I'm praising God so much, and I can't describe in words the kind of freedom that I have been experiencing. I'm blessed by each and every word and every sermon. As I just receive God's word, I don't do anything else, just receive by watching the sermons. I experience the supernatural intervention of God in that area of my life. And uh, then she, you know, just appreciates um, the sermons. She also says, I was blessed by the sermon on God's word, the miracle seed. I've downloaded the Bible app, and I'm finding it to be an excellent tool. Um, and she just celebrates God's healing in her life. Amen? You know, what I really like about this, 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 this testimony is this person received it from God through his word. Amen? And also she did, you know, she, she moved wisely. I mean, she went to her doctor. Uh, she informed them she's just going off medications. And, you know, she, she did it in a proper way, in a nice way, you know. And I really like that, that there is faith and there is also wisdom in how this person went about doing it. So please understand, we're not against doctors or medicines. Uh, and, and we learn how to, you know, manage these things well and move by faith. And thank God that she has uh, experienced complete freedom uh, as the Lord healed her. And uh, it's wonderful to know that. And also she took her time to share her testimony um, so that we know it's something God has done and is established for her. Let's turn in our Bibles, please, to uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 7. We're going to read verses 7 through 11. Uh, we're continuing from last Sunday's message, where we talked about end times lifestyle. So I just want to you know, read that passage that we went through last Sunday, 1 Peter 4, 7 through 11. Let's read it out together, please. Let's go. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above, above all things, have fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So just to quickly review, Peter, in his two epistles, uh, now you know, just a little background, uh, uh, if we say approximately, and these days are obviously approximate, but if we say the day of Pentecost was around AD 30, Peter wrote First Peter around AD, 30, uh, AD 63. That's about 33 years post the day of Pentecost. And he wrote Second Peter approximately around AD 67 or 68, uh, uh, just before he was killed, uh, martyred. So uh, it's about 30 years since you know, the day of Pentecost, 30 plus years, Peter was written, 1 Peter and 2 Peter. And we mentioned that uh, an important theme in both the epistles is the return of the Lord. The Lord is coming back, uh, and so we should be ready. And that's what this passage is saying. Peter is saying, you know, the end of all things is at hand. I mean, it's near. The end is near. Therefore, live like this. And so we highlighted five lifestyle patterns, behaviors he gives us in, 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 in 1 Peter 4, 7 through 11. He says, the end is near, therefore. First, he says, be watchful in prayer. Two, he says, love. Right? He says, uh, you know, love fervently, passionately, fervently. Three, be hospitable. Four, he says, exercise your gifts. Use your gift to serve people. And five, do everything to the glory of God. So he's basically saying, end is near, live like this. Very simple. Amen? And so we kind of outlined that last week. And today, we want to delve into the first thing. And we're not going to delve in all the five. We're just going to touch on one today and another one next week. But we want to delve into verse 7. 1 Peter 4, 7. He says, the end of all things is at hand. The end is near. So what should you and I do? He, see, he says, be serious and watchful in your prayers. So today, we want to talk about being watchful in our 
prayers, being watchful. What does he mean? What does it mean to be watchful in prayer? So the end is near, be watchful in prayer. And we explained last Sunday, the word be serious literally means to be sober-minded or to be of a sound mind or to be clear in your mind. So don't get muddled up in your mind with all kinds of crazy and silly things. Right? Be clear in your mind. And we will see why that's important if you're going to be watchful in prayer. You know, be sober, be clear-minded. And then he says, be watchful in your prayer. So we're going to focus on what it means to watch in prayer. What, what does it mean to be watchful? I just want to highlight, he says, in prayers, plural, meaning all kinds of prayer, all manner of prayer, all forms of prayer. Engage in all of that. So we know in scripture there are different kinds of prayer. There's a prayer of thanksgiving. There's a prayer of praise and worship. There's a prayer of intercession. The prayer of supplication. The prayer of agreement when we agree two or more. There's a praying in the spirit when we pray in tongues. So there are all kinds of prayer. There is personal prayer. There's collective prayer. So he says engage in all of this. In prayers. Engage. Be, in, be active in all of this. Be active in, in your prayer life. So really this morning's message is directed towards our prayer life. Because he says, the end of all things is near. Be serious and be watchful in your prayers. Do not prayer life. Be alert. Be watchful in prayer life. Right? Now, the word watch is very interesting when you, when you look at that word. Uh, in, uh, uh, let me just back up a bit. You know, the, being watchful in prayer is a theme throughout Scripture. You know, we find many, many Scriptures where the Bible says, "Watch and pray, watch and pray," right? And I'll just remind us of three Scriptures we are familiar with, and all of us will remember Matthew twenty-six, verse forty-one, right? We're to be watchful in prayer. And this is Jesus himself speaking. We'll come back to this verse a little later. But let's read it. Let's go. Let's read it out loud together. Jesus said, watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So Jesus himself said, watch and pray. Be watchful in prayer. We will explain that uh, a little bit. Again, we see in Colossians 4, chapter 4 and verse 2, the apostle Paul writes, he says, continue earnestly in prayer being vigilant in it with thanksgiving just continue in prayer and be vigilant be watchful in prayer with thanksgiving continue with thanksgiving so it's the lifestyle of a believer being watchful in prayer um, just one more verse from scripture Ephesians 6 and verse 18 where the apostle Paul is uh, writing to us about our spiritual armor and uh, you know he lists out all the different pieces of our armor and then he kind of sums it up by undergirding this uh, uh, all with this in Ephesians 6 18 he says let's read it praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So again, the word watchful in connection with prayer. He says pray with all kinds of prayer and be watchful in it. Watchful in it. So we want to understand today, what does it mean to be watchful in prayer? How do I do it? How do I practice that in life? And so that's what we're going to do this morning. It's very interesting when you look at the word watch in the verb. The verb watch, in, when you look at the Greek words that I used there, there are five Greek words, five different Greek words that are used for watch. You know, and that's the beauty of the Greek language. And in English, we have one word, watch. But in Greek, there are five different words that are being translated watch. And when you try to look at them carefully, it, it translates to us in our English language. It tells us these four different things that we do when we watch. First, it's used in the context of being on guard. It's like a security, you know, watch man, being on guard. So when the Bible says watch, one of the aspects it's talking about is be uh, vigilant, be on guard, like a, on security duty, be, be on guard. Another word, another meaning of that, in fact, two of the Greek words mean be awake in the idea of being sleepless. Physically awake. Right? Don't fall asleep. Be awake. And uh, of course when it is used in the context of prayer. It's talking about being alert. 
Don't go into being spiritually alert as opposed to being spiritual in spiritual slumber. So be awake. A third way this, this word watch is translated is to be intent. Meaning you're watching, observing somebody. And then you're watching, if I, if I, for example, if I'm watching uh, Sanjay, I'm, I'm, my eyes are focused. I'm observing. That is, that is your intent. You're looking very focused, observing something or someone. So it's used in that context as well. Being very observant, being intent in your, in your watching. And the last one, the fourth one, it's being, is used is being sober, which is how it is used in 1 Peter 4, 7. Be watchful, be sober. The literal Greek there is, uh, uh, don't be intoxicated with wine. That's a literal word, translation, but it's, you know, they put it in nice English, be watchful. But literally means, don't be intoxicated. Be sober, right? Because when, when a person is intoxicated, they're under the control of something, that's it, they can't be watchful. They, you know, they, they, know. They, they end up being careless. They end up doing things that, it, as opposed to a person who's calm and circumspect, who's sober, a person opposite to that can do things and then they regret it later. So that's what he's saying, be sober. So it's very really interesting. Now, try to apply all these things to prayer. Saying watch in prayer. So in prayer, he's saying be on guard. In prayer, be spiritually alert. In prayer, watch intently, focus. In prayer, stay sober. Be sober and pray. Are you getting it? Now that's what you and I as believers are supposed to be doing through our prayer, through our prayer. And so I want to just break this down of how, uh, you know, I practice it in my life and I just share it with you. And uh, hopefully you and I, all of us, will be able to do these things uh, as we watch in prayer. So I want to talk about first uh, three things to be watchful for in prayer. Now I'm going to go through this fast uh, very quickly. Um, uh, there are many, many scriptures I've put down in the sermon notes, which you could go back and study. Uh, but, you know, as we, uh, as we cover this message, I, I will not be reading all of them, maybe just mention some of them. But I encourage you to take the sermon notes and, and delve further into this. Three things uh, to be watchful in prayer. You all with me so far? Amen. Three things to be watchful. First, watchful to see what is happening around you. Watchful to see what is happening around you. So you watch. What are people doing? What's happening in situations, circumstances? How about things changing? You're watchful. So watchful about things happening around you. Right? So uh, how do you apply it in your life? Maybe, you know, be, be a watchful. What's happening in your own family? Don't wake up 25 years later and say, oh, I'm married 25. What happened to my son, daughter? Oh, they grew up. Hey, be watchful. Be alert to the things, what's happening around you. People, circumstances, situations, things that are changing. Be watchful. And uh, in, Bi in the Bible, in Habakkuk 1 verse 5, God says, watch and see among the nations. I will do a thing that will astound you. I'm saying, look, be watchful. Look around on the nations, what's happening. So as a believer, you should look at that news. I mean, don't spend all your time on the news, but God is saying, watch what's happening because I'm going to do a wonder among the nations. So you need to see what's happening. What's happening in China? What's happening in Russia? What's happening in Europe? What's happening in Africa? What's happening in the North and South America? Be watchful as a Christian, as a believer, watchful because you, God is moving in the nations. Watch over your own life. And uh, Paul writes to Timothy, 2 Timothy 4, 5. He says, as a man of God, you be watchful in all things. So as a man of God, you've got to be watchful, watchful. What's happening around you? Right? What, what's happening? What, how are people moving? Watchful. And uh, uh, Revelation 3, 2 and 3 to the local church in, in uh, uh, um, I forget, I think it's Sardis. But so Revelation 3, 2 and 3, God is telling the local church. He's telling the people there. He says, be watchful as a church. Watch over your ways. Watch over your works. Because I do, I'm not finding them perfect. So as a church, he says, what, be watchful. How you're conducting yourself, how your, your ways and your works, be watchful on those things. Right? So watch what's happening around you. And then what do you do? You pray about these things. You pray about these things. So I pray. So God, you know, suppose there's something happening. I guess God, 
I'm praying about this. What do I do? What should I do? Should I do anything? Should I keep quiet? There are times God says, don't do anything. Chill, relax. God handles it. But there are something God says, you know, you need to step in. You need to say, you need to do this. So you're watchful about things and you're praying. You're watching with the nations. What's happening? Say, God, I'm seeing all this happen. What's ha what does this mean? This is happening in these nations. What are you saying? You're watchful. You're listening. You're watchful about things happening around you. Second thing to be uh, watchful about. So when you're watchful, deal with these things in the spirit. Sometimes God will say, you know, you need to address that matter in the spirit. There is this and this happening. Deal with that in the spirit. So you're dealing with that circumstance, situation happening in your life. You're watchful and then you're dealing it with it in the spirit. Are you with me? See, it's about your job. Maybe else make it plain and simple. Bring it home. You know, maybe in your workplace, you're finding some friends or your colleagues doing certain things. And so reacting immediately, watch, go pray. God, these things are happening. What do you want me to do? Sometimes God will say, do nothing. Sometimes God will say, this is what you need to do. He'll give you ideas. But you watch in prayer about what's happening around you. Second, what do we watch over in prayer? Be watchful to see what God is revealing to you. You see, when we are praying, praying is not just me giving God my list of things. No, prayer is a two-way engagement. And when you're watching in prayer, often God speaks, God reveals, God shows you things. So when you're watching in prayer, you're also listening, you're also seeing. Habakkuk, you know, Habakkuk said in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, he said, I will set myself on my watch and I will watch to see and listen to what the Lord will say to me. So in prayer, he's watching to see what God will speak to him. And in so many matters, sometimes I pray over something, maybe for months. If I have to make a decision, a very important decision, I might just watch over it in prayer for myself. God, what do I have to do in this situation? How do I deal with it? And sometimes I pray over it month because I'm not getting an answer. I'm just, you know, I need to know clearly. Some decisions, of course, I pray, I know what to do. I come and do it. But sometimes you pray over it for a long time until you know that God has shown you what you should be doing about it. But you're watching and listening to God about the matter. You're listening to God to what he will say to you about these things. Watch so that God can speak to you. Daniel shares about this in Daniel 7 when he says, I watched and I saw what God was say, revealing to me. So there's a vision, there's a dream. He's watching to see what God is saying to him. Amen? Are you with me so far? Watch to see what God will say. Number three, be watchful to respond to God's moving within you. So when you're praying, you're watching and praying. You're watching for the stirring of God's spirit inside you. Sometimes God will stir you about, about things that you're not even praying about. Imagine Peter decided to go one afternoon for prayer. He went to the terrace. He's waiting for, I don't know who was doing the cooking, but somebody was doing the cooking. <laughs> he was waiting for lunch to get ready. And he just went to watch and pray. And at that moment, God spoke to him about something we can be definite that Peter was not praying about. The last thing on his mind is taking the gospel to the Gentiles. Because at that time, the gospel was being only preached to the Jews. Peter was very happy. Everything was going fine in Jerusalem. Yeah, they're facing persecution, but the gospel is going. So we're doing our job. Jesus said in Jerusalem and Judea, we're doing it. But while he was watching, God gave him a word. Peter, three men are going to come looking for you. Go with them. Don't ask any questions. And God opened the door to the Gentiles. Amen. So when you're watching, God will move you, stir you to do things that you, aren't, you weren't expecting, but that's the way he wants you to go. So be watchful for the moving or the stirring of God's spirit in you, in prayer. Are you with me? So three things that we watch for, or watch, or watch for in prayer. We are watchful in prayer, watchful to see what's happening around you, pray about those things. Watchful. To see what God is revealing to you. Watchful to respond to God's moving within you. Now. Before we close. Four areas to be watchful 
over in prayer? What should be watchful over? Number one, be watchful over your own life. Be watchful over yourself. Jesus said in Matthew 26, 41, he said, watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. So watch over your own life in prayer. So as you pray, God, what's happening in my own life? Is everything in my life right before you? Are there areas in my life where the enemy is knocking? He said, watch and pray. You're being on guard in prayer. You're intent in prayer. You're listening to God in prayer. Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. So you're watchful in prayer. God, is everything in my life okay? Is the enemy about to make inroads in any area of my life? Right? You're watching all oh, your own life, how you're conducting yourself. You also watch in order to stand firm in the faith. 1 Corinthians 16, verse 13. Paul wrote, watch. Let's read it together, please. Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. Let's read it again. Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. So watch for what? To make sure you are standing fast in the faith. Make sure you are being brave. Make sure you are being strong. Watch. Jesus said in the last days. There will be so much of deception on the earth. That even the very elect. Could get deceived. Chosen ones. Could get deceived. So what must you do? Watch. So that you're standing firm in the faith. And you know, just this, this real, this season, I was, I was just thinking, I said, God, the church seems so confused. Especially the Western church. They seem so confused. And, and God, how can the church be healed? How can the church be restored? And God, help me. And this is my prayer. Help me to stay true to your word. I want to die having stayed true to the word of God and not being carried away by everything that sways the Western church. Because when the Western church is shaken, the rest of the church follows. So God, it's so, sometimes I just cry looking at the church in America. God, I cry. The way the church is gone. God, what should I do? Because I cannot follow them. I cannot follow their example. What should I do? I said, God help me to stay true to the word of God. I want to die preaching the cross of Jesus. I want to die preaching the word of God. Not what the church in America is preaching. Are you listening? Because you've got to stand, watch and stand fast in the faith. You've got to keep the faith. You can't get swayed. Now what's happening in the church? If you look at the church, it's easy to drift away. But you've got to watch. And if you're not watching, you risk moving away from the faith. Are you listening? So Paul said, watch. Stand fast in the faith. Be brave, be strong. So avoid things that will draw you away from faith in the Lord Jesus. From the basic of the word of God and the cross of Jesus. Uh, uh, watch yourself that you're not giving room to the devil. Uh, watch yourself that you're not falling into sins that will destroy your destiny. You know, Paul outlines this in 1 Corinthians 10, 5 to 13. And I've put it in the notes, but uh, you know, we could spend weeks just talking about being watchful in prayer. But I'm just condensing it for us in 40 minutes. But one of the things Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 5 to 13, he says, be watchful about these five things which destroyed the destiny of God's people. He says, first, they began to lust after other things. Second, there was idolatry. Third, they began to tempt Christ. They, they, they ended up murmuring against God and complaining. And these were the things, he says, that destroyed them 
their destiny. They kept them out of their land of promise. And so Paul says, let him who thinks he stands, take heed, be watchful, lest he fall. So he's saying, look, we've got an example. Look at them. The Old Testament people. These five things robbed them of their destiny. And so he tells you and me as believers, be careful. Watch that you don't fall into these five things. Are you listening? So watch over your own life in prayer. Otherwise, you and I could risk falling either into temptation or just departing from the faith, the simplicity and the purity of the word of God and the cross of Jesus. Number two, watchful for the maneuvers. Be watchful for the maneuvers of the devil. The Bible teaches us, we know the scripture in 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9, be sober, be vigilant. All right, let's say that together. Be sober, be vigilant. Let's say it a little loud, bold and strong. Be sober, be vigilant. It says, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, and you be steadfast in your faith, uh, resist him. Right? But what must we do? He says, be sober, be vigilant. Very interesting. Be sober. It's that same word that Peter used earlier in 1 Peter 4, 7, when he said, be watchful in prayer. Here it is translated, be sober. Same thing. That means don't get intoxicated is, is the same word. Be sober. And be vigilant is the other Greek word that's translated be on guard. That's like a security person. You know, watchful. So be sober, be vigilant. Why? There's an enemy, the devil. He's watching. He's, he's, he's going around seeking opportunity to do war. So you be on alert. So second, be watchful. For the maneuvers of the devil. So Jesus taught us to pray. He said, you know, when you're praying, you pray like this. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from the evil one. Now this is not God taking you saying, come on, devil, devil, tempt him. That's not. He's saying, God, keep me that I don't go down the path where I'm going to be tempted. Rather, God, keep me from what the devil's doing. So that's the way we pray. We're watching and praying. God, keep me from the maneuvers, the strategies, the schemes of the devil. And, uh, you know, there are so, much, so many examples in the Bible uh, of how people did it. And we need to be alert. And Jesus is an example. In Luke 22, verses 31 and 32, uh, Jesus saw what, was, what the enemy was doing. And he said, Peter, Peter, Satan has desired to have you, but I've prayed for you. So he knew the enemy was trying to get at Peter, but I prayed for you. Right? Being a sensitive to what the enemy is doing. So I want to make two statements here, and, and please understand it uh, correctly. First, think like the devil. Okay? It means, think strategically. If I were the devil, what will I do to knock Ashish out? Think like that. You get it? So I'm not saying think like the devil means, pastor said, think like the devil. No. What I'm saying is, think strategically. If I were the devil, what would I do to knock Ashish out? Very simple. Because you know your own points of weakness. Only God knows better than you about your own points of weakness. And don't think the devil is stupid. He also knows. And he's going to come with his greatest force at your points of weakness. So just be on guard, double guard in your points of weakness. If you were the devil, what would you do to knock yourself out? Be on guard in those areas. Be on double guard. Be cautious. Because if you can shut that door and keep that door shut, the devil has no chance against you. Are you with me? So in prayer, you're watchful about the manures of devil. You're listening to God and God is saying, Ashish, watch that. Be careful. Be careful what's happening there. Watch over that. It's okay, God. I'm going to watch that. Secondly, not only be strategic, but be preemptive. 
That means you got to think like this. I'm telling you all these things because I'm doing these things. Okay? I'm not just preaching a sermon. But I do this. Think preemptively. What can I do to protect myself, my family, and what God has entrusted to me from any inroad the enemy might try to make now or in the future? So I'm not just thinking right now. I'm thinking in the future. So I'm thinking preemptively. What can I do to protect what God has given me? Me, myself, my family, the church, the ministry. What can I do to protect it from any inroad the enemy might make? Not just now, but in the future. So certain decisions I make, not because they have impact now, but because they have impact for the future. I'm thinking preemptively. I'm looking five years down the road, ten years from the road. I'm looking when I'm not here anymore. How can the church be protected? I don't want to leave any door open for the enemy to come in later. Are you with me? Some are. you got to think preemptively. Right? You're preempting the moves of the enemy. Because the Bible says, we're not ignorant of his devices. It's the old serpent. He's pretty old. So we know his tactics. We know where he's going to move. We're not ignorant of his devices. So you as a believer, when you're watchful in prayer, and you're praying over decisions, you're praying over things, you're thinking five years ahead, 10 years ahead, 20 years ahead, God, I want to make sure things I do today will secure the work you're releasing 20 years down the road. Are you understanding? Because you're preempting what the enemy would do in the future. Now, some will say Jesus is coming soon. That's good, but he told us to be watchful in prayer. So I'll do my part. Number three. Be watchful over God's people. So this is very important. For those of us who are in spiritual leadership. In the house of God. That we must watch over each other. And I'm just going to reference one verse. One passage of scripture. In Acts 20 verses 28 to 31. There are several passages. Let's read it together, please. Verse 28. Therefore, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseer to shepherd the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from among yourselves, men will rise up speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Verse 31, therefore, watch. That is what Paul is saying. He's talking to the elders in the church in Ephesus. This is in Acts 20. Paul is on his way to Jerusalem. And he knows this is the last time he's going to meet these elders in Jerusalem. He spent more than three and a half years in his third missionary journey. Staying in Ephesus. Sorry. Staying in Ephesus and training up these leaders. He actually raised up the next generation of leaders in Ephesus. And now he's on his way to Jerusalem. He knows he's never going to see them again. And this is what he says. He says, you know, uh, you, know you watch over the people of of God, whom God, the Holy Spirit has made you an overseer, in some way overseeing them. And he says, these are God's people whom he has purchased with his own blood because I know people will come in to destroy. People will come in to take things away. So therefore, he says, watch, watch, watch over the people. So you and I, in prayer, we are watchful over each other. It is true for those of us in spiritual leadership, but I'm also Putting this out to all of us. That we can watch over each other in prayer. Watchful. That nobody gets distracted. Taken away here and there. Uh, in in uh, all kinds of things. And there are several scriptures. Both in the Old and the New Testament. That deal with this. Now I'll just quickly uh, run through these lists of scripture. You know. In Isaiah 62 verse 6. God tells. I have set watchmen over Israel to pray for you. In Jeremiah 6, 17, he says, again, watchmen, they, they need to hear the sound of the trumpet and alert the people of any danger that comes. In Ezekiel 3 he, and, and 33, he tells Ezekiel, Ezekiel, you're a watchman for the house of Israel. Hear my word and speak to them, warn them, alert them. 
Uh, if we, uh, then you come to the New Testament. In Matthew 26, we saw Jesus invited his disciples to watch and pray during his time of temptation. His hour. So as you watch and pray with me. Can you imagine Jesus asking the support of his disciples to pray with them? Are you listening? So we can do that for each other. We can watch and pray for each other during their during different ones, their times of challenge. In Ephesians 6, 18, again, he tell, tells us to pray for all believers. In Colossians 4, 22 to 4, again, he says, you know, pray for those who are preaching the word. So several references. The last point here is this, we are to be watchful for the coming of the Lord. Matthew 25, verse 13. Let's read that together, please. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. So he's, you know, Jesus said a lot of this. I've just referenced one scripture here. He says, you don't know when, G when the Son of Man is coming, so you watch. Be alert. So what should you and I do? Be alert by the signs of the times. Look at what's going on globally. And you understand, you see Bible prophecy being fulfilled right before our eyes. So you're alert, you're aware of the signs of the times. This is what's happening. But then, you're watchful for a reason. Two important reasons. One you're watchful and you're praying and saying, God, what should I, what do you want me to do? Given all that's happening, what do you want me to do? So I pray and I'm praying, spending time praying in tongues. I say, God, what, what's the next step? What should we be doing now? Given what's happening, given the time is short, what should we be doing? Right? You're watchful and you're asking God, what should I be doing in life? What should I be doing in the church? What should I be doing in the ministry? Because I know, I'm alert, I'm, I'm seeing what's happening. I know the time is short. I'm seeing what's happening globally, the way things are changing. What do you want me to do? So you're asking God, how should I live given the times in which I am? Secondly, you want, you're watchful so that you could be ready for the coming of the Lord. That any time Jesus comes, I'm ready, you're ready. Amen. So you live in a state of readiness. So let's quickly review before we close. Peter told us, he said, be watchful in prayer. Three things be watchful in prayer for. Watchful to see what's happening around you. What's going on around you? Pray about those things. Things that matter to you. Watchful to see what God's revealing to you. God will be speaking to you. Be watchful. Be sensitive. Be attentive. Watchful to respond to God's moving within you. God says do. Move. Act. Go. Be watchful. Four things. Four areas to watch. Be watchful over in prayer. When you're praying, be watchful over your own life. God, is everything okay? Are the doors shut? Am I going down a path that's going to lead me into temptation? Am I preempting the enemy? That's number two. Watch for the maneuvers of the devil. Be watchful, number three, over God's people. And be watchful for the coming of the Lord. Amen? I want to invite each of us to really be strengthened in our life of prayer. When you take time to pray, whatever time you take, I'm not pressuring everyone to say you have to pray one hour every day. That's not the point. The point is, when you pray, watch and pray. Watchful for things happening around you, what's going on. Watchful about what the enemy is doing. Watchful over your own life. Watchful for other people. God, is everybody okay? Watchful, Lord, am I living the way I should be living given the times in which I'm living? Be watchful over these things in prayer. Listen to what God is saying. Listen to what God is moving you into. Move with God. Amen? Let's rise to our feet. Call the worship team up, please. And The Holy Spirit, the Bible tells us, is the spirit of grace. Is a spirit of 
prayer, the spirit of grace and supplication. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of supplication. Or you can just put it, the spirit of prayer. The Holy Spirit is a spirit of prayer. He anoints us. He empowers us in prayer. So prayer is you and I working with the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's not a uh, like a boring thing or a religious duty that we have to fulfill. No, it's you and I co-laboring with the Holy Spirit. He's the spirit of prayer. The spirit of supplication. So we've heard the word of God calling us to be watchful in prayer. And we, I just want you to ask, Holy Spirit, help me in this area. Help me to grow in this area. Help me be a watchman in prayer. Help me to be a watchful in prayer. Just take some time. Some of us may be very experienced in prayer. We may know how to pray for many hours. Some of us may be still young in this. Maybe you can pray for half an hour, 15 minutes, whatever. It doesn't matter. But the Holy Spirit empowers us in prayer. So this morning I'm asking that the Holy Spirit, who is a spirit of prayer, a spirit of supplication, empower you, anoint you, empower you to be watchful in prayer. To be somebody who is alert for your own life, for other people, for the purposes of God. Be watchful. So Father, even as we stand in your presence right now, I pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you will anoint, you will touch every person, God, in this auditorium and those watching us or those listening. That the spirit of prayer will be poured out on every person. So that we will be people who are watchful in prayer. We'll be watchful in prayer. And may we have the privilege of seeing what you reveal to us, of hearing what you say to us, of recognizing your stirring and your moving in our hearts. May we be people who are sensitive when you correct us, when you alert us, when we take a wrong step or when there's a scheme of the enemy. May we be people who will look out for one another because we've been in prayer. And you've said pray. May we be people. For God will protect. One another in prayer. May we be people. Who always live ready. Doing what you want us to do. Each and every day. Pour out the spirit of prayer. As we wait on you.
Father, we just pray and ask that each of us will grow in this, will grow in our time with you, in our watchfulness and prayer with you, God. And may you do wonderful things for each of us as we watch and pray. May we hear wonderful testimonies of young and old who heard from you in that sweet hour of prayer, in that place of prayer, that you spoke to them, you revealed things to them, you guided them, you worked through them as they watched in prayer. May we hear those testimonies, God. You can use each one this way. Each one. We thank you. Thank you. We bless you, Lord. We bless you. Thank you. We're just going to take a few moments to pray for uh, people who need healing in your bodies. I just want you to lay your hand on that part of your body. I want Jesus to heal. Those of you watching us live, um, you can do that right where you are. Just pray. Pray with us. We all pray. We all declare healing in this place. And for those watching us 
if you've been informed by the doctor about a growth or a tumor in your body and and and, and you're watching or you're here just lay your hand on that part of your body and if you want to pray and believe god the growths and tumors will disappear the healing will come any other kind of condition that you have in your body just lay your hand on your body we're going to believe god father we thank you that you're a good god you are our healer so I pray specifically for the individual or those people God who've got growths and tumors in their bodies right now this very moment we agree as God's people and we speak to tumors we speak to growths and we command them to disappear we command them to leave we command them in Jesus name to dematerialize and be gone let there be a complete instant healing Let the tumor growth be gone in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray that as the person or the persons go back, get themselves re-examined, they'll have a testimony of your miracle that's taken place right this moment. There'll be a testimony of your miracle, Lord. We thank you, Father. We thank you. for your healing and also we take authority over every sickness every disease every infirmity and in the name of Jesus we set our faith against it we command it to leave and the healing power of God flow through you right now right now and you say i receive my healing in Jesus name i receive my healing in Jesus name Father thank you for your healing taking place wherever people are watching listening thank you for your healing and thank you for your work in their lives we praise you we honor you in Jesus name in Jesus name amen 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 Next Sunday we're going to continue in 1 Peter chapter 4. We're going to look at the other thing that Peter said in verse 10. He said as each one has received a gift minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. So we're going to talk next Sunday about being steward or stewarding your gift grace and ministry. Right? Each one Now some of you may say pastor ministry not me what gift no each one of us god has given us gift grace and ministry each one of us has it now but we have to be stewards he said you steward it be a steward of the gift grace and ministry that god has given and he said to each one each one means every person has been given that so we're going to talk about that next sunday and uh, we will just uh you know spend some time around that pray and pray for God to even awaken some of the gifts and grace that are in our lives some of us don't even know it's there but let God awaken it bring it out amen and uh, stir us all up in our gift grace and ministry we're going to close right now those of you who are watching online a uh, part of our pastoral team is online and uh, so if you need prayer you could connect to the prayer rooms on zoom and uh, they will be there to pray with you minister to you those of you in the auditorium if you want to pray and minister uh pastor jakes myself will be here uh, we'll be happy to uh meet with you and pray with you right after this service right so we're going to close and uh, we will dismiss after this father thank you for what you have ministered into our hearts and we carry the anointing we carry the grace what you've been what has been released to us and let it work in our lives may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god our heavenly father and the sweet fellowship of his holy spirit be with all of us each of us in jesus name amen amen